Valborgs Meso Afton, Valborg Fair Eve, Valpurgisk Fair Eve, Last April, or Everyday Valborg is the Swedish version of Valpurgisk Nacht, but kind of its own version of it. The tradition is held in Sweden, Finland and Estonia, that is to say the old parts of the Swedish Empire, during the last day of April. The tradition is probably based on a pre-Christian holiday that has long been celebrated in ancient Nordic times and in Germany as an ancient Germanic tradition, but which has later come to be named after the cult surrounding the holy saint Valborg or Valpurgis. This tradition is similar to other pre-Christian traditions seen in Europe, for example Beltane seen among the Celts, as it has a very similar fire element to it. In any case, the tradition of Valborg was adopted by the church and dedicated to the saint of Valborg or Valpurgis. Though in recent time it is less about the holy saint of Valpurgis and the celebration is more about the coming of summer and light generally and having a fun time with friends and family and has less to do with regular church attendance. Though there does exist some more conservative Swedish people that still attend church much more often during this day of the last of April. Like many holidays, the holiday of Valborg is celebrated during the day with feasting with the eating of good food and drinking of good drink, such as mead or for those that don't drink alcoholic beverages, fladersaft, which is a drink made out of water mixed with either honey or sugar, some lemon juice or apple cider vinegar, and a special type of flower that usually blooms later in the year, but is usually kept dry for this occasion. Sometimes you even mix this drink with alcohol. Actually, generally a lot of alcohol is consumed during Valborg. Moving from drink, there is also a certain pastry known as struvor, which is often served with powdered sugar, jam and whipped cream that are eaten during this day. Also, during the day, games and small-scale festivals are held in the towns of Sweden with competitions such as Pugs of War, dancing competitions, wrestling and various other types of competitions and fun games for the youth to participate in. And the day generally is very much a youth thing, really. And this fact, together with the matter of the large consumption of alcohol that is a common staple of this holiday, means that it is sometimes rather wild. Though it should be said that in older times it used to almost be tradition to have large scale fights break out on the town squares and or other sorts of general chaos erupting in large gatherings. It was so common and accepted that violence would erupt during these public games that uh, even into the 20th century you had provisions in the law that stated that you'd get reduced punishments for violence and rambunctious behavior in public space during this day. Though it should be said that today the festivities are a lot less violent and much more peaceful and less wild. Though if you have ever lived close to the university city of Lund during Wallborg, oh, this can be debated. Though speaking about the university city of Lund and students, student associations tend to be the organizers behind a lot of the Valborg celebrations and the games associated with Valborg. And in addition to student organizations organizing the celebrations associated with Valborg, you also have the fact that the 1st of May is Workers' Day. And since it's so close to Valborg, the traditions of the 1st of May tend to blend together with Valborg and due to the dominance of the Social Democratic Workers' Party in Swedish modern history, they and their associated trade unions have historically organized a lot of Valborg celebrations as well and thus integrated it into their own traditions. It is quite impressive how what was possibly at first a pagan celebration became a Christian religious holiday and then later got adopted by the secular social democrats into their traditions.
But this is not all, because lastly, you also have the fact that the last of April is also the birthday of our current king. So there are some celebrations that have been associated with his birthday that has blended into the celebration of Valborg, such as the raising of the Swedish flag and the use of fireworks during Valborg. Valborg has had quite a history of transforming itself through the ages by adopting various traditions and getting adopted by various groups in Swedish history and in the history of those other countries which have their traditions of Valborg descending from the Swedish Empire. Though despite this large amount of time that has passed and all of these various groups that have adopted Valborg and added to it throughout the ages, one tradition has remained, one tradition has endured from even pagan times. And that is the kindling of bonfires in the night on high places so that everyone in the vicinity can see them. In fact, these bonfires have traditionally been a point of pride for those that have gathered the materials for them and lit them. Usually there has existed traditions of competition between various villages to create the biggest fire, the biggest bonfire that is the envy of all the others around them. And thus, there has been competitions of building large stacks of flammable wood and other things that burn over the days preceding Valborg. And there has also been in the past, but sometimes even to today, been traditions of actually stealing burnable material from the heaps, from each other's heaps. Though usually there has been traditions and certain rules about how you are doing this, like you can only do it during night. And if you're caught, you're supposed to help the opposing village with gathering material for the bonfire. As kind of a gentleman's agreement based upon honor. Similar sorts of traditions associated with these bonfires are also done on the night of Easter on the western coast of Sweden. So there is some overlap between those traditions and the traditions of Valborg. In that region. The motivation for kindling these bonfires is that it's because of a sort of belief in that it scares away witches and other evil creatures said to be active on this day of Valborg during the night. Though this is a later belief that was added later. It is originally believed that the fires were originally lit not to scare away witches and other creatures but to burn the old and to make way for the new as Valborg was a celebration of spring and the coming of summer. In connection to the kindling of these fires there is usually a lot of dancing and usually even more drinking. Yet often in a much more relaxed type of atmosphere than it what is during the day of Valborg. You also have a lot of fire related local rituals or traditions, usually for example the torches carried by certain people on the 1st of May on the worker demonstrations are lit during the night from these bonfires. As another example of how Valborg and its various traditions are a mix of pagan, Christian and secular influences. This was Swedish Valborg in short and I hope you liked this video about it. Please do subscribe as it would help the channel spread awareness about the humanities. Stark will come out in my